Uh, good morning and uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. So I'm thrilled to welcome you all to our webinar on IMDS latest updates and future announcements. Along with, we will be seeing recommendation 025. So in the next 45 minutes, we will dive into the latest developments in the IMDS and discuss future enhancements, recommendations that will impact your compliance efforts. Our next slide. Our next slide again. Uh, so uh, before we jump into the content, let's go over some housekeeping items. All participants except for the speakers are currently muted to minimize any background noise disruptions. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be shared with all the attendees after the webinar. So you can revisit any key points if you need. At the end of our session, we will have a brief survey for you to fill out. Your feedback is valuable in helping us improve and tailor future webinars to your needs. If you have any questions or comments during the webinar, please feel free to use the comment section. We will do our best to address them during the Q&A session or we will follow up with you afterwards. Next slide. And here comes, let's take a moment to introduce our speakers for you today. So first up, we have Bhuvaneshwari Babu, an experienced IMDS expert from APA Engineering with a deep understanding of compliance issues in the automotive sector. And joining Bhuvaneshwari is Srinivasan Mani, also an IMDS expert from APA Engineering, specifying in the advanced features and functionalities within the IMDS platform. Next slide. So let me uh, quickly introduce about APA's core divisions. So APA is a trusted provider of engineering, sourcing, IT, and compliance solutions for the automotive sector. As you could see, our expertise ranges from product development to regulatory compliance. We ensure clients stay with a competitive in a dynamic industry. So we also focus on all the regulations, uh, as you could see, IMDS, PFAS regulations, IMD solutions, and Prop 65, and much more. Next slide. So here's some overview of an agenda. I would like to hand over without further delay to the speaker, Bhuvaneshwari Bhavan. Thank you, Pavitra, for your warm introduction. I will continue the webinar further. Once again, welcome you all for the today's webinar session. Thank you very much for having me here today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the today's webinar presentation. Here myself, Bhuvaneshwari Babu, I am going to present the topics about IMDS release 14.4 and IMDS release 15.0 and remaining IMDS recommendation 025 will explain by my colleague Srinivasan. So without further ado, let's begin the webinar. The purpose of the today's meeting is we are going to present about the below topics today. Here you can see the today's webinar agenda. So we are going to talk about IMDS release 14.4. This was already released in IMDS and the production plan was already rolled on and implemented in IMDS. So followed by IMDS release 15.0. So this is going to happen in the future and we will going to explain about what is uh, what will be happening in the future enhancement in details. And the third one will be the IMDS recommendation 025. As I already said, my colleague will explain about what is in the IMDS recommendation 0 to 5 in details and share its insight. Finally, we have a Q&A section. If you have any doubts or queries, feel free to ask us. Uh, we will answer those questions at the end of the session. So let's begin our first topic, IMDS release 14.4. Here you can see the announcement in details. When was the IMDS release 14.4 planned on? Yes, we already know that the production plan was already exist in July 3rd, 2024. What was the check changes in IMDS release 14.4? We will get a new warning message in the case of ATEX material. Checking these changes in the IMDS means the process of reviewing, verifying and a modification or any updates made by the IMDS team. By checking these changes in the IMDS, the users can maintain their data accuracy, integrity, and compliance within the system. So what was the changes happened in the IMDS release 14.4? Here you can see the result. We will get a new warning message for ATEX material classification present in our data. So we already know that 
these classifications like 8.1 are uh, used for uh, electronic materials and 8.2 is uh, electric materials these were already deactivated in a previous imds release 13.0 on may 19 2021 now after the release 14.4 this classification were completely deactivated and not in use so we can't use them for any creation purpose or release purpose there is no longer in use so now i'm going to tell you about what was the impact that existing data happens in after the imds release 14.4 i have mentioned two key points here identification of potentially outdated material and the improved data quality i'll explain one by one so far the deactivated classification 8.1 and 8.2 will be flagged by the new warning messages so that we can easily locate the where is the outdated classification information that is present in our imds record so we can potentially identify where is the imds material present in our data obviously the new check encourages to update the existing classification in our system so which will result more accuracy in the data so definitely it should improve our data quality how the check changes impact our user workflow again i have mentioned two points here increase the awareness and potential need for the data review and update user will definitely know about these deactivated classifications like 8.1 and 8.2 as the result of we are receiving the warning alert so after the release of ios 14.4 definitely we need to update our old data which is present as a deactivated classification it is necessary for the users who can receive the warning messages to go over the material and update them with the current updated classifications so potentially we need for a data review for our old data we need to get a resubmission from our suppliers we need to update with the current updated classification and finally we need to submit our customers so this will impact our user workflow so here i have uh, uh, mentioned like uh, one screenshot over here this is for the imds release after 14.4 uh, we can see that there is no atex classification present over here they were removed in the uh, from the list so after the 7.3 classification directly next comes from the 9x classification so I already said we can't use the atex classification year after finally we came to the conclusion for the imds release 14.4 the new check which encourages the usage of the current updated classification system and discourages the reliance of the outdated classification so it will improve our data accuracy and as well as the regulatory compliant action as well so after the imds release 14.4 we can't use the atex classification instead we can use the other classification so this is a major thing focused for the imds release 14.4 so next we'll move to the uh, our next topic imds release 15.0 as already said this is a future which is going to happen in the future so here the announcement with the release are we have a two options here one is a major announcement and another one is a minor enhancement the major announcement they are focusing more over for the data accuracy and for the customer concentric so based on that they have uh, majorly concentrate on three parts one is mccp and tnpp so next one will be the mandatory to answer the regulatory information and third one for the carbon footprint and next for the minor coming up to the minor announcement we have a two options here like simply answered for the polymeric part marking and the rest portion displays as strange so we will cover these uh, details by the upcoming slides so first of all what is the imds release 15.0 so what is the major use for it and what is the purpose of the imds release 15.0 so uh, by the answer you can see this slide the imds model office rolled out on planned on june 13 2024 
so production for plan was not yet started what is the purpose of the imds release 15.0 the international material data system which is nothing but imds steering committee is considering prioritizing the enhancement for the imds release 15 with the goal of making this release process more elegant and customer centric as already said the imds release 15.0 is totally based on the customer concepts so some of these changes of the imds steering committee is considering to include so the continuous delivery for the data supplement so next one would be the continuous deployment the release on demand flexible releases more and smaller releases a more flexible announcement release these are the uh, few key points the imds steering committee is focusing for the imds release 15.0 so these are the main purpose they are focusing into it so next we'll move on to the major announcement uh, that is a, this is the first one mccp so what is mccp a medium chain chlorinated paraffins or the mixture of chlorinated hydrocarbon with a chain length of 14 to 17 carbon atoms and the small chlorine content range from the 40 to 70 percent this is a new regulation type mccp available in the regulatory wizard it is also known as a chemistry manager so this is basically already we are using bpr and reach in the imds so it is similarly like that so it behaves like same the way what we are using bpr or reach so here i have mentioned some of the applications what are the mccp substance used in automobile industries so we can see over here like cables and wire for using plasticizer and frame retardant in a insulation purpose for a corrosive prevention resistance coating and used as a additives fuel fillers many other types of the component in the plastic parts expanding foam saline fire retardant types rtd for the components and acrylic spray, uh, spray paints rtd which is nothing but reaming tapping and drilling process so these are the major application for the mccp substance used in the automobile industry so these are the outline of the mccp so next i'll tell you how we can fill this mccp regulatory wizard so here you can see the screenshot over here mccp is opened when the basic substance is added into a material so here we have a two field open here like basic substance contain and the hazardous statement the two field can be filled out for the regulatory wizard one is substance contained and another one is hazardous statement here the, there is no options here for the substance contained we have a three option first one is none so next uh, next one is greater than or equal to 80 percent of linear hydrocarbons with a carbon chain length range from the c14 to 7 c17 if your basic substance is related to this one you can choose this option if your substance is contained with this one you can go with the next options like more than or equal to 45 percentage of weight of the chlorine in the alkaline with the carbon chain length which a range of c14 to c17 so for the basic substance contained we have a three option if your basic substance suit with which one of the option you can go with that one so next we'll move on to the hazardous statement here i have mentioned another screenshot here the material which is added by the mccp substance so regulatory wizard was open uh, here the material imds id version so next one would be the cast number of this basic substance here you can see the substance contain and added with the second option for the hazardous statement this is uh, comes under the gsh like globally harmonized system of classification substance of chemicals plus an option to declare the substance as not classified both the fields are mandatory and allowed a multiple session but but none and not classified selected along with any other option in the corresponding substance so these mccp substance or dynamic 
HVAC, which is nothing but substance in very high concern. So definitely it will create a negative impact on our environment. So definitely uh, we need to answer this regulatory wizard properly. If you are not enter the option, it has been selected with the latest version of regulatory information. So next will be move on to TNPP. This is also a similar like MCCP regulatory wizard. So we will see what is TNPP. A trust non penile phosphate, which is nothing but TNPP, it regulatory under the existing substance of the recognition. TNPP is also identifies as a substance in very high concern. So definitely it will create a serious negative effect on the environment. So as I already said, this is also similarly like BPR, REACH and MCCP. This is also one of the regulatory information we need to answer after IMDS release 15.0. So this wizard is also open for the substance. So I've mentioned some of the application for the TNPP substance in a different uh, industrial users. So for the industrial users, TNPP is used in the progressing of Processing of rubber and plastic product and as a act as an antioxidant in a polymer like polyesters polyurethane and polystyrene etc For the consumer uses TNPP is used for electrical and electronic products as well as as the non pesticide law of garden products and TNPP C, TNPP is also used for uh, food and packaging industry and uh, hygienic products also. So these are the major some of the applications for the TNPP. Now we'll get the overview of TNPP. Now we'll move to how we can fill this TNPP regulatory wizard. A new regulatory type of TNPP which made up of available in the regulatory wizard. This is also filled by the chemistry manager who are creating the material. The regulation type of generally behaves like as similar as MCCP. So you can here we get a we need to fill only one question over here contain greater than or equal to 0.1 percent of four nonyl penals. This is a mandatory field. If your substance contain this much and um, this much of percentage, you should go with S. Yes. Otherwise, you can choose the option no. So TNPP is also a dynamic substance in very high concern. So definitely we need to answer yes must be present in the regulatory information. So here I have give two examples. So first one is TNPP regulatory wizard not filled with the regulatory information. So second one would be the TNPP regulatory wizard filled with the regulatory information. If your basic substance contain the TNPP substance if you are not answered this question. So definitely you will get a warning message. So we must answer uh, we must to fill this regulatory wizard. If you fill this option means uh, you need to get uh, uh, any uh, warning message like this. So you can see here the material which is added with the TNPP substance. So that ID version of this material is showing here. The cast number of the substance is here. Here last MCCP the two fields were open one is substance contained and another one is hazards contained but here for the TNPP substance only one question is there like containing this much of a substance if your substance containing percent means you can choose with yes or no. So this is all up to MCCP and TNPP regulatory information next we'll move on to the hot topic in IMDS so which is nothing but carbon footprint PCF. So what is the carbon footprint in IMDS? So carbon footprint is a total amount of the greenhouse gases that is generated by our actions like including both the carbon dioxide and methane. The average carbon footprint for a person in a United States was 16 tons one of the highest rates in the world globally the average of carbon footprint is closer to four tons the for carbon footprint is a future that being developed by the integrated management system for the data sheet that will collect the pcf value through the entire supply chain from their sub suppliers so the pcf value will be calculated at the part of the material level and is exhibited to available in the future version of imds 
so now i'm going to tell you how to calculate the pcf value so i mentioned three key points here like main value calculation next we'll move on to the calculation process finally we have a exclusivity factor so what is main value calculation so pcf calculation is based on the canatina x rule book all another accepted sector of rule book the method is used to determine the primary value to associate with the carbon footprint so for the main value calculation we need to take some of the basic action from the canatina x rule book so next for the calculation process as already said this is a not a manual calculation we need to get the data from our sub supplier through the entire supply level by the material creation so pcf is determined outside of the imds potentially support from the system to display the cumulative sum of the received suppliers of the pcfs this indicate that the imds might assess the showcasing showcasing the combined carbon footprints provided by the different suppliers so for the exclusivity factor the pcf combination include the internal process logistics within the suppliers operation and the logistics from the sub supplier chain the comprehensive approach of the encompasses from the various stages of production the transportation to the provide the historical view of carbon footprint so here uh, here i have mentioned some key points over here like data structure and data visibility for the data structure as i already said P pcf data value will be collected only by the sub supplier to the material level there is no automatic calculation over here so data will be entered and versionized separately for the each production site the transportation of the carbon footprint value entered and versionized for the each production site and the customer site there is a relation between them so data field will be based on the pcf rule book by the canada nix uh, by comes under the data visibility uh, it the pcf value only shows for the direct supplier and the pcf value data entered by the sub supplier only see the dqr and pdes value will be shown on so dqr which is nothing but data quality review and pds means primary data sharing so for the primary data sharing value we need to get the data value from the sub supplier level so here you can see the screenshot of the pcf so detailed information about pcf first of all we see here like a production site in the production site we need to enter the region country subdivision zip code and dense number so the material creator will uh, enter all these value the pcf contact as we are using imds imds is also having the contact person so similarly like that pcf also have the contact person so for the pcf contact person uh, their email email id and the telephone will be shown here and the already we know that the rule book is canatina x there is no certification process here so here we comes under the main page of product carbon footprint as i already said there is no manual calculation here we need to enter the values one by one from the through the entire supply chain from our sub supplier level so the pcf of referred mdrs so we need to enter this value pcf total excluding biometric this one and the time period from when it started to end and the dqr and pds value this is only shown for the sub supplier so dqr has already said data review quality data quality review and pds is nothing but primary data sharing so expected emission so these are the information we need to fill fill up it so next one is transport cf so transport which is nothing but production side to the customer side so we need to enter the production side here and next one is customer side here so we'll get the coverage so customer responsibility to so transport carbon footprint trade so detailed g g emission so that's all from the pcf so next we'll move on to the mandatory to fill the regulatory information so after the imds release 15.0 it is mandatory to fill the all the regulatory information 
like BPR, REACH, MCCP, now I'm explain T and PP substance. These are the basic one. After the IMDS release 15.0, we must answer all the regulatory information while sending, proposing or publishing or any material which is related to the regulatory information. The regulatory answer should be entered. If we not enter those regulatory information, we will get an error message so that we cannot able to send or propose our data to the customer. If we enter the details, but the regulatory information that not matches with the IMDS composition means we will receive a warning message like your information is missing. You can see the screenshot over here. They've entered the material with the BPR related substance. They've entered, but um, the information is uh, not uh, does not match with the IMDS composition. That's why it shows like an error message like BPR regulatory information is missing. So there is no, no such messages when the releasing on module or IMDS internally release. So we came to the minor changes. The major enhancement were completed. Next we'll move on to the minor enhancement. That is the first one is show rest as range. So before IMDS uh, release of 15.0, we will be using like this one. You can see the example over here. So we are using the rest option. So while creating the material, we are adding the basic substance one by one. For the last basic substance, we will give that rest option. So it will calculate the automatically for the rest of the value. So after the IMDS release 15.0, the rest portion from the fixed value, not from the fixed value, it is from the minimum to maximum value so that we can predict the proper value for the rest option also. So this will be the one minor enhancement in IMDS release 15.0. So we came to the final slide of my presentation, simplified polymeric part marking. Palmic part marking is required only for the 5x material classification in case present in our data. To reduce this unnecessary work when referring to the polymer for a component field availability, enter the polymeric part marking information only required in the component contains. Uh, for if your material having more than 100 gram of polymeric material, which is having the classifications like 5.1, 5.4 and 5x, uh, is must be answered. If your weight is more than 200 gram for the polymeric material, which having the classifications like 5.2 and 5.3, definitely the answer should be mandatory for the polymeric part marking. The input field we, uh, will open only for the case of the required material. No answer or blank is allowed if a material weight is less than that the specific limit. So we have a three option in polymeric part marking. We already know that yes, not applicable and no. Yes must be selected if the actual physical part has been marked according to the ISO standard. So for the not applicable option, uh, it is only applicable if the part marking is not possible due to weight, dimension or any surface uh, structure. So that time we can go with the not applicable answer option. So for the no means the part marking is required, but they have not marked. So this means we have a three option. If your weight is more than that of the specific limit. So definitely we need to answer for the simplified polymeric part marking. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I will hand over to my colleague Srinivasan Mai to explain about our last topic, IIS recommendation 0 to 5. So it is a time for a quick poll here before to the next speaker presents. Please everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Srini, uh, I'll hand over to uh, Srini. Okay, uh, thanks, Bhuvi. Uh, myself, Srini. Thank <laughs> I'm here to present the topic uh, IMDS recommendation 025. 
and here are the topics i am going to cover today first the purpose of this uh, recommendation im is uh, 025 is to address the upcoming obligations uh, in reporting uh, recycled and uh, bio based content the im is steering committee has uh, decided to enhance the already existing functionality to facilitate and uh, enable the communication of uh, recycled and bio based content in materials and semi components throughout the supply chain while imds release 14 will provide the infrastructure to report and uh, store the corresponding data from supply chains it however it does not uh, describe how the values are to be calculated this recommendation aims to closing this gap while ensuring data consistency and reliability by providing the terminology to be used by the stakeholders and the common methodology for defining and calculating recycled and bio based content and the next topic is definitions this recommendation is based on the definitions in iso 1401 is to 2016 an essential terminology framework for determining the recycled content of products the most relevant terminologies can be summarized as follows first what is recycled content the portions by mass of recycled material in a product or packaging only pre consumer and post consumer materials should be considered as recycled content consistent with the following usage of terms next then uh, pre consumer recyclate uh, or the materials diverted from uh, waste stream during a manufacturing process excluded is the reutilization of materials such as rework regrind or scrap generated in the process and capable of being reclaimed within the same process that generated it the pre consumer recyclate is a synonym for post industrial recyclate then post consumer recyclate or materials generated by households or by commercials industrial and uh, institutional facilities in their role as end users of the product which can no longer be used for its intended purpose this includes return of material from the distribution chain then recycled material also called uh, recyclate or materials that would have otherwise been disposed of as waste or uh, used for energy recovery but has instead been collected and uh, recovered as a material input instead of a new primary material for a recycling or a manufacturing process then then to the next topic definition support source of materials including circular materials in imds the materials based on inorganic matters such as ores or minerals or fossil fuels like mineral oils or the content of inorganic or fossil based materials then the content of bio based materials to constitute a material as uh, bio based it must be of biological origin inorganic materials or materials found in geological formations like metals cannot be bio based polymer materials derived from renewable or organic sources like paleolithic acid must be reported under bio based materials then materials uh, made from primary renewable raw materials like uh, natural rubber cotton flax or sugar cane or content of primary bio based materials then the materials made from waste or residue of uh, renewable raw materials example of used to cooking oil or agriculture waste or content of secondary bio based materials then the content of uh, mechanical recyclate mechanical recycling technology recovers uh, collected waste via mechanical and uh, physical processes uh, typically sorting grinding washing or separating materials uh, drying and uh, recrystallization to produce material input that retains the chemical identity of the collected waste material then the content of chemical recycling in chemical recycling process waste material is recovered by means of a chemical process in case of a polymer this is the conversion to monomer or production of a new raw materials by changing the chemical structure of waste streams through cracking gasification or depolymerization excluding energy recovery and the incineration in addition to that uh, solvent extraction is considered as a physical process and must be calculated within mechanical recycling as we already see a uh, pre consumer recyclate or uh, the materials uh, diverted from the waste stream during a manufacturing process and post consumer recyclate or materials that generated by households or by commercial or industrial and institutional facilities both this waste uh, can be processed by mechanical or or chemical recycling process next mos balanced the mos balance is a chain of custody approach to account for materials uh, entering and leaving a system in the chemical industry renewable or uh, recycled feedstock is mixed in a continuous operating production process 
with the fossil based feedstock and attributed to specific end products after chemical transformation have taken place it is a key characteristics in existing certification schemes that a physical link between input and output material exists then certifications to ensure that produced materials fulfill certain standards different certifications were established for example iscc or red cert or sustainable certifications system to guarantee that feedstock and the process fulfill different criteria depending on the specific requirement different sub certifications systems like iscc plus can be chosen the drop down list provides a list of basic schemes in case a certification scheme you are using is not mentioned please inform the imd service desk that it will be added to the list uh, here is the process flow of uh, mass balance process here the recycled uh, feedback uh, getting by mechanical recycling and chemical recycling process uh, along with the fossil based uh, feedstock is given as a feedback input then after the manufacturing process we get the products with the specific uh, properties and qualities next topic uh, data entry for source of materials including circular materials in imds overview the im grade ingredients details screen displays the source of material further details are available in the dialog shown after pressing the edit or view button in the top right corner then data entry related to material classification to modify the information about the source of the material open the wizard dialog by clicking the edit button to save your changes click the apply button in the dialog once closed the system will automatically calculate the value shown in the details section of the ingredient screen based on your input the first fields available in the dialog depend on the classification of the material although chemical recyclate can be entered into imds for all material classification it is only required for polymer materials with a classification 5 if applicable there are three types of secondary sources for which you can enter information the mechanical recyclate is required for classifications 1 to 5 son point 1 and son point 2 and chemical recyclate is only required for the classification 5 that is uh, polymer materials then bio based content is only required for the classifications 5 to 6 son point 1 and 9.1 to 9.4 and here is the rule from the recommendation the uh, rule 4.2.8 a states that uh, chemical recyclate must be entered for uh, polymer materials that is classification 5 if applicable and uh, here is the overview of the dialog wizard of the source of materials here the first portion shows the percentage of uh, recycled content in the material and the second portion shows the mechanical uh, recyclate percentage of the material and the next portion shows the chemical uh, recyclate percentage in the material and the last portion shows the bio based content in the material the following fields are provided in the dialog uh, depending on the available source the fields only appear if the parent field is filled for example the field content of recyclate is only shown if s has been selected as the answer to does the material contain recyclate in case the total bio based content is greater than 0 percentage the field for content of primary bio based content and the content of secondary bio based content are shown therefore the dialog will appear much smaller and open for the first time than in the following overview then the recyclate and the bio based content percentage calculation on material level first uh, the portions are always entered with a maximum and a minimum value if you want to enter a fixed value for example 100 percentage uh, you have to enter 100 percentage to 100 percentage all values are relative to their parent values that means the sum of two values on the same level always adds up to 100 percentage of their parent for example the sum of mechanical recyclate and chemical recyclate makes up 100 percentage of the total recycled content to assist you when entering these values changing one value will automatically recalculate the opposite values for example when changing the content of uh, pre consumer recyclate to 20 to 30 percentage the content of post consumer recyclate will be set to 70 to 80 percentage automatically closing the dialog will calculate the total portion of the different sources within the whole material and display them in the materials details by multiplying all relevant minimum and maximum values for example the minimum portion of the pre consumer mechanical recyclate in the whole material is calculated by multiplying the minimum values of the following fields that is uh, content of inorganic or fossil based uh, materials multiplying content of recyclate multiplying content of mechanical recyclate thereof multiplying content of pre consumer recyclate thereof uh, here is an example for uh, 
PPGF20 with 80% pre consumer recyclate uh, from mechanical recycling. Here, the content of inorganic and uh, fossil based material entered as 100%. So, the content of bio based uh, material is uh, 0%. And S has been answered uh, for does the material contain recyclate. Here, the content of primary inorganic or fossil based material is uh, 20%. So, the balance at 80% is from the recyclate. From the recyclate, the mechanical recyclate uh, percentage is 100. So, the chemical recyclate percentage is 0. From the mechanical recyclate, 100% uh, uh, is getting from the pre consumer recyclate. So, the post consumer recyclate values are 0%. And here on the right side is the calculated values uh, shown in the detail section of the ingredients page. And then uh, non recycled fillers are not included in the calculation of recycled content. However, legacy fillers will be included as they cannot be accounted uh, for accurately. For example, non recycled glass fibers added to the recycled resin must not be taken into account in the recycled content calculation. The same reasoning applies to additives. Here's the uh, two more rules from recommendation. The rec uh, rule 4.3.8 states uh, non recycled fillers must not be included in the calculation of recycled content. And the rule 4.3.B states legacy fillers must be included in the calculation of recycled content. Then uh, data entry rules and the related checks. The following big array of checks is in place regarding the information about the source of material. First, a check message is shown in case the minimum and the maximum value of uh, any of the following entry fields for mechanical recyclate within the dialogue deviate more than 20 percentage from each other. That is a uh, content of mechanical recyclate thereof and content of pre consumer recyclate thereof and content of post consumer recyclate thereof. And the second one for the MDS created uh, before the introduction of detailed recycled information in the release 14.0. A check message is shown in case the minimum and maximum value of any of the following fields for mechanical recyclate within the details section of the ingredient screen deviate more than 20 percentage from each other. That is pre consumer uh, mechanical recyclate and post consumer mechanical recyclate. In case the material is a polymer, this message is uh, error message, else it is a warning. Then there is no such uh, checks for chemical recycling or uh, secondary bio based content. Then for polymers, an error message is shown in case the question does the material contain recyclate has not been answered yet. For polymers released before IMDS release 13, which do not have information about the material source attached to themselves, but entered upon uh, referencing. This error is not shown in case the polymer is referenced in a component and assigned a weight less than 5 grams. Here are the few more rules from recommendation. First, the recommendation 4.4.A states if the polymer material contain a recycled content and are released after IMDS release 13, you must answer the question does the material contain recycled with yes. Then the rule 4.4.B if polymer materials contain recycled content and are released before IMDS release 13, which do not have information about the material source attached to themselves, but entered upon referencing. You must answer the question Does the metal contain recyclate with S yes, in case the polymer is referenced in a component and assigned a weight of more than 5 grams? Then, rule 4.4.C A question Does the metal contain recyclate does not need to be answered with S yes or no for materials of any classification weighting less than or equal to 5 grams when referenced in a component? Then, rule 4.4.D states The minimum and maximum value for the fields uh, content of mechanical recyclate thereof. Content of pre consumer recyclate thereof, the content of post consumer recyclate thereof must not deviate more than 20% for polymer materials. Then, guideline 4.4.A the minimum and the maximum value for the fields content of mechanical recyclate thereof, and content of pre consumer recyclate thereof, and content of post consumer recyclate thereof shall not deviate more than 20% for non polymeric materials, that is, classification from 1 to 4 and 6 to 9. And here we come to the examples. So uh, here, here are the few examples uh, with the different classifications. First, uh, filled thermoplastics containing pre and post consumer mechanical recyclate. Here the content of inorganic or uh, fossil based material uh, is 100%. So the content of bio based material is uh, 0%. 
and S has been answered for does the material contain recyclate. Here the content of uh, primary inorganic or fossil based material is 50 percentage. So the remaining 50 percentage is from the recyclate. And from the recyclate, uh, here's the content of uh, mechanical recyclate is 100 percentage. So the content of chemical recyclate is uh, zero percentage. From the mechanical recyclate, uh, we get the 50 percentage uh, from the pre-consumer recyclate and the remaining 50 percentage from the post-consumer recyclate. And here is the calculated value shown in the details section, the ingredients page. Here the 50 percentage from the 50 percent recycle content uh, is divided into two halves of uh, pre-consumer and uh, post-consumer. So here the calculated value shows uh, 25 percentage pre-consumer and 25 percentage post-consumer mechanical recycle. The next example is uh, filled thermoplastics containing post-consumer chemical recycle. Here the content of inorganic or fossil phased material is uh, 100%. So the content of bio-based material is uh, zero percentage and S has been answered for does the material contain recyclate. And then for uh, content of primary inorganic or fossil based material is uh, 70 to 80 percentage. So the remaining uh, 20 to 30 percentage is from the recyclate content. And from the recyclate, uh, uh, there is no uh, recyclate from the mechanical recyclate. Uh, so all the 100 percentage is from the chemical recyclate. From the chemical recyclate, uh, we get the 100 percentage from the post-consumer recyclate. So the pre-consumer recyclate is zero percentage. And S has been answered for the most balanced. And here the certification is selected as IACC. So here the calculated value is shown in the detail section of the ingredients page. Next example is uh, filled thermoplastics containing pre and post consumer mechanical and uh, chemical recyclate. Here the content of uh, inorganic or fossil based material is 100 uh, percentage. So the content of uh, bio based material is zero percentage. And S has been answered for does the material contain recyclate. And then the content of primary inorganic or fossil based material is uh, 60 to 70 percentage. So the remaining 30 to 40 percentage is from the recyclate. From the recyclate. 90 percentage is from the mechanical recyclate and the remaining 10 percentage we get from the chemical recyclate. And from the mechanical recyclate, 90 percentage is from the pre-consumer recyclate and the balanced 10 percentage is from the post-consumer recyclate. Also from chemical recyclate, 70 percentage from the pre-consumer recyclate and the remaining 30 percentage is from the post-consumer recyclate. And this has been answered for the most balanced question. And for certification, IACC plus is selected. So here is the calculated values uh, shown in the ingredients page. The next example is unfilled thermoplastics uh, containing pre-consumer mechanical recyclate and post-consumer chemical recyclate. Here the content of uh, inorganic or fossil based material is 100 percentage. So the content of bio based is uh, zero percentage. And yes, that's been answered uh, for does the material contain recyclate. Here, the content of uh, primary inorganic or fossil based material is 80 to 95 percentage. So the remaining uh, 5 to 20 percentage is from the recyclate. And from the recyclate, uh, mechanical recyclate is 90 percentage and the balance 10 percentage is from the chemical recyclate. And from the chemical recyclate, all 100 percentage is uh, getting from the pre-consumer recyclate. So the post-consumer recyclate uh, percentage is zero. And in chemical recyclate, content of pre-consumer recyclate thereof uh, is uh, zero percentage. So we get all the hundred percentage from the post-consumer recyclate. And for the mass balance, S has been chosen. And for the certification, IACC plus is chosen. Here is the calculated value shown in the detail section. The next examples of filled thermoplastics containing primary bio-based filler. Here the content of inorganic or fossil based material is 80 percentage. So the remaining 20 percentage is from the bio-based content. And no has been chosen for does the material contain recyclate. Here from the bio-based uh, content, we get 100 percentage from the primary bio-based material. So the secondary bio-based material is 0 percentage. Here is the calculated value shown in the details section. Uh, next example is uh, elastomer containing uh, post-consumer mechanical recyclator. 
here the content of inorganic or fossil based material is 100 percentage so the content of bio based material is zero percentage here s has been chosen for does the material contained recyclate and the content of primary inorganic or fossil based material is uh, 55 to 60 percentage so the remaining 40 to 45 percentage is getting from the recyclate from the recyclate all 100 percentage uh, we get from the mechanical recyclate so the percentage of chemical recyclate is zero from the mechanical recyclate uh, we get all the 100 percentage uh, from post consumer recyclate so the pre consumer recyclate percentage is zero uh, here is the calculated value shown in the detail section then here we come to the conclusion of this webinar in this webinar we discussed the uh, imds list 14.4 and 15.0 here are the few key points to remember material classification 8.1 and 8.2 were deactivated and not in use anymore after the imds release 15.0 it is mandatory to answer the mccp and the tnpp regulatory information it's mandatory to fill in all the regulatory information details then ppm should answer only for the required fields the next one is the next uh, rest portion will be displayed as uh, range and here are the few key on point one adjusting the checks uh, for mechanical recycling ranges ex exceeding 20 percentage to only consider entered values both changes request have been already implemented in imd list 14.3 then detailed guidelines for the content of uh, chemical recycling in polymers then additional examples for materials of various classifications containing recycled and bio-based content Uh, thank you to our speakers for sharing these uh, inv valuable insights. So now let's uh, open the floor for a Q&A as we have a few more minutes. So please submit your questions in the comment sections and our speakers will be glad to respond. Uh, we have one more question, I guess. Bhuneshwari you can take this one. It's for you. Okay, Pavi. Yes, we got a question from the attendee side. Uh, could you suggest the updated current classification for IMDS creation instead of ATEX classification? It's a very good question, actually. Uh, yes, I've already informed like uh, IMDS release 14.4, ATEX classification were completely deactivated. So instead, we can use for the material creation. Uh, 7.2 and 7.3 instead of 8x classification. So 7.2 is for ceramic or glass, uh, 7.3 for uh, other compounds. So based on our material requirements, uh, we can go with uh, 7.2 or 7.3 material classification would be preferred for uh, instead of uh, 8x classification. Okay, so if we have further questions, please uh, put it in the comment section or uh, write to us. We'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so thank you everyone. So here's about uh, AP solutions. So we provide a comprehensive suite of services and solutions uh, tailored to our clients' unique needs. So which includes IMDS or CAMDS, ELVs, PFAS, ECOSP reporting, which ROHS, conflict minerals, ESG, and CBAM. So ensuring compliance with the latest environmental regulations. We also offer customized software solutions to support product chemical and sustainability needs, which including MDS Express for IMDS, Green Check for non-automotive and chemical regulations, Autogen CM for conflict minerals, and ESG HQ for sustainability initiatives, which all are done in-house so as per the customized solutions if you require. And the next slide will be our uh, dashboards of our uh, softwares, which you could see. And uh, yes, we are here to wind up. So thank you all for joining us today and thank you to the speakers. We hope you find the webinar on IMDS release and recommendation informative and uh, insightful. And please don't forget to provide feedback and suggestions because we take your feedback very seriously and uh, use it to the enhance our upcoming webinars. So kindly take a moment to fill it out. So recording of the session will be shared. So the, all the attendees will be getting it uh, in the, for their future reference. 
if you have any questions that you would have missed to ask you can please reach out to our team at compliance at apengineering.com and you can also learn more about APA engineering you we will be assisting in IMDS needs thank you once again for your participation and have a wonderful day thank you all